Hi guys, and today we are going to be looking at another railroad loco, and this one is on the Holden Great Western 101. Like I said, this is a railroad one. I believe it came in a pack uh, with two wagons and a brake truck. I believe I could be wrong. Oh, it might have come with the breakdown train. I don't know. Um, yeah, this is a very basic loco. I'm a big fan of these. I have three. Uh, this is my take on this locomotive. Um, the smaller locomotives seem to get overlooked by the bigger channels. They seem to go for the big hitters, um, in my opinion. Um, so this is my take on the Holden 101 by Hornby. Here is some model information on the Holden 101. Despite it being unique and having a short life, the experiment locomotive was picked up by Hornby in the late 70s. And Hornby have produced this since 1978 in prototypical liveries and non-prototypical liveries too. Uh, this includes the, rail, um, the Christmas set and the Coleman's um, livery, as well as some really nice looking Great Western ones too. It also is part of the railroad range as we speak in 2020. You can also get it in a train pack as well. So as we start on the front of the locomotive, like we always do, uh, we have some plastic and metal buffers, not sprung. We have a red buffer beam, moulded red hook in the centre. We also have a separately applied vacuum pipe. Uh, which I believe came in the detail pack that I added. We have the massive D slash square coupling, more of a square coupling here. We have some um, metal bits underneath the locomotive here uh, to move things off the line. I believe that's what they were for. We have some steps either side of the tank and we have a moulded handrail running down. We have a smoke box door, dart as well, moulded. Uh, nice brass effect, copper chimney there, um, traditional of the Great Westerns. As we move on to the um, side of the locomotive, both sides of the locomotive are the same. Uh, basically we have the cylinders here for where the rods are going in and out. They're both the same either side. You see straight through the centre there, just below the boiler. We have the lovely Great Western printing on the tanks there in Great Western uh, livery in gold. We also have the number of the loco which is 104. We have the handrails are painted in gold but they are moulded as you can see, the either side of the locomotive or the cab, also um, along the um, tanks and along the boiler here too. We have that step that I announced uh, earlier in the video. You also see the coal as well and the roof with the uh, slats to stop the rain going over the drivers as well. And we have the dome which is just green. We also have some underfloor detail along here too. As we move on to the cab area and the end of the locomotive, as you can see we have the plastic uh, metal, uh, plastic black buffers. We also have the big D coupling, which hopefully you can just see. I have some steps just down here as well. There are the handrails I mentioned um, earlier about the gold ones. The cab details are um, moulded, but it's there. We also have uh, four lamp pines that look to be moulded as well. We also have the uh, plastic hook which you can't see but it's there. We also have the vacuum pipe as well. As we look from above of the locomotive, there is some more moulded details. Here being where you put the water into the um, tanks. Also see the whistles a bit more better and, and the chrome or bronze style chimney. Also see the coal at the side and the roof. There's a little bit more detail to them than it used to. And finally, as we look at, uh, underneath of the locomotive onto the chassis, as you can see, it's a um, all-wheel pickup. This is a O for O locomotive. It is the same motor that's in the Smoky Joe, and I think the um, BR Class Four, the Hornby Joe, was it Class Six? Um, as you see, it says made in China, and it has the volts, the 12 volts. Also have the screw to hold in the motor. You also, if you look down here, you also have. The clips just to unclip the shell off the locomotive very easily to maintain. You also have the cog just here with the oil, uh, very lightly oil, just there. You can also see the two big D couplings, and if you look carefully, you can also see the motor as well.
GW101 class. The GW101 class is a single experiment locomotive and it is a 040 side tank locomotive. It was built at Great Western Works at Swindon under the di director or direction of William Dean, the chief mechanical engineer. James Holden in 1901, originally built as an oil burning locomotive uh, to help the economy of that technology. Number 101 was um, employed as a complex firebox and valve gear. It was intended for light passenger services on the Wilton Valley Light Railway near Bristol. However, due to technical issues associated with the design, the locomotive never saw intended service. It remained at Swindon Works until 1905, at which time GW rebuilt the locomotive as a conventional coal-burning um, tank engine and used it as a works shunter. As a non-standard design, the locomotive appeared to have being redrawn and scrapped by 1911. Here is some brief information on the locomotive. Its um, power type is steam. The designer is James Holden. It was built at Swindon Works um, uh, in 1901. Only one of them were produced. The wheel configuration is the O40. It is a standard gauge as far as I know. The fuel type is originally oil. And then as a rebuilt, it was coal. It only operated under the Great Western. Its number was 101. It was withdrawn in 1911, giving it 10 years or so in service. It not preserved and it was scrapped. So yeah, next up is the points test. Uh, I'm not bothered going to do second radius because it can do second radius, uh, even though it's on third. Um, so next up is points test. That made it pretty well for a small 040 in my opinion. So yeah, it managed them um, points pretty well, um, quite a lot of dead zones there, pretty well managed that for a small locomotive, very small wheelbase um, there, got to be honest. Uh, next up will be some slow speed and we'll find it a running session and I'll see you at the end. Again, pretty nice.
So yeah, guys, that's the end of the running session. Um, I'll just give you, uh, before I give you my opinion, I will tell you what it was running with. Its partner was B2 uh, by Hornby, and this is in the uh, National Cardboard Royal Blue, I believe. And this is a stunning loco. Um, if you've not seen it, please check my video out. It should be uh, um, appearing on the screen now, or at the start of the running session. Um, in the shed, or the yard, we had the Oxford N7, Stunning Loco 2. Around the corner here, we have the J83 or 82, I can't remember at this point. Uh, that is a railroad one, and that's a lovely runner too. Very basic, a lot like the Holden. Then over in there, as you see, it's Polly just sticking its um, bunker out in the shed. And that's a triangle locomotive. I thought I'd put it on, so you know, it's Hornby's 20, uh, 100 years of making model railway. Um, the stock that the Holden was pulling was a brake run special, a couple of um, Great West, a uh, couple of Oxford Rail six wheelers, uh, weathered and unweathered, and then an old fashioned triangle one at the end. And the National Car Board just basically had a mixture of wagons. I don't know if it's pretty typical, but I enjoy it. Um, let's get back to the main thing, which is this one here. My opinion on this, um, yeah, like I said, this is the Chinese made one and it runs superb. As you saw there, it managed the points wonderful, it managed the track wonderful. Um, yeah, it's a short 040, um, but yeah, it's a lovely runner. The earlier ones are a little bit too fast. Um, I find, you know, I have two of them, one of them. Uh, one of them, definitely one of them is oh, really, really common, one is really old. Um, would I recommend it? I, I would actually. Um, people who uh, are small layout like me, they don't look too bad. Um, big layout, yeah, you could use it as a, uh, the intended for, which was uh, passenger service, little, uh, 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 little four-wheel coaches. You could use it as a station pilot or a shunting engine. Or alternatively, um, could just have it static in the car park of the station. Um, or you could practice your uh, skills of um, doing stuff to it, like weathering or um, doing detail in the cab. Um, or you could just repaint it and have it at a fictional livery, um, which Hornby seemed to do. You could have a National Cold Board one. Uh, you could do Lady from Thomas the Tank. I, I don't know. Uh, the list is endless. You could practice whatever. I would highly recommend it, but um, people who have serious layouts don't seem to run them, and big YouTubers don't seem to review them as much. Um, and if they do, they seem to criticise it quite heavily. Uh, I think this is a lovely locomotive. I would highly recommend it, like I said. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but don't take my word out on it. Go out and buy one if you don't believe it. Pretty, pretty cheap. Cheap as a £10, £5. Um, pretty cheap. Um, so that's the end of the video, guys. Until next time, it's goodbye from these beauties. And it's goodbye from me. Bye.